What do you make of this uh, whole scrappage program? Well, we have been in this market since 2012 when we have invested about $1.3 billion in the market. And in this short time of eight years, we have put about 100,000 trucks and buses on Indian roads. All the products which we make here are more than 90% local. And we export them to more than 50 countries around the world, which forms about 30% of our revenue. So, in fact, if you talk about uh, the policy of Indian government, we are a good example of make in India as well as vocal for local. Now, coming to the scrappage policy which you asked, uh, we believe that it's a welcome step. In fact, this is exactly what India needed since a long time. Uh, actually, what we need is an end-of-life vehicles policy uh, because that is more holistic and forward-looking. We have, in fact, been advocating for this policy for uh, quite a lot of time uh, uh, since now. And for a very simple reason, we have millions of vehicles on Indian roads which should have seen their end of life a long time ago. And they, they need to be replaced with more safe, comfortable, more fuel efficient and less polluting vehicles. And this will, uh, you know, on one hand, we are talking about the demand it will generate in the auto sector. But what is even more important is this will make our roads safer. It will reduce pollution and it will, it will help us save on fossil fuel consumption. Well, we believe it will also create but, 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 another so I, think I want to get to also, you know, is there the capacity to deal with these numbers? And uh, the other thing is, how likely is it they come to you to buy their trucks in the future as opposed to somebody else? So how will it affect your demand profile? Well, uh, first talking about uh, uh, the demand, we believe that it will definitely generate demand. And when it comes to DICV, uh, we have enough capacity uh, to meet this demand. So when this policy is actually rolled out we are expecting some details in the next 15 days uh, we will be ready to ramp up our uh, operations as needed uh, now what is needed also to make this policy successful and generate that demand uh, well i will give you some numbers here and these are staggering numbers uh, we have roughly 5.1 million uh, light uh, motor vehicles which are more than 20 years old and 1.7 million medium and heavy commercial vehicles on the road which are more than 15 years now, even if uh, we are able to take 50% of them off, we could save about 800 million tons of crude oil and bring down the CO2 levels by 2 million tons every year. Now, to make this successful, we will definitely need organized scrapping centers built on the principle of recycle and reuse. They must also be legally backed, uh, formalized, and compliant with the pollution norms in the state which they are located. And even more importantly, we will need a very robust IT infrastructure to deregister the vehicle uh, when it is taken for scrapping. So I guess a lot of work has to be done in the coming months to make this successful and get the desired benefits out of it. Sajikam. Sajikam, what about you know, this policy change? It's, of course, more likely to be benefiting truck makers than commercial, well, sorry, private vehicles. Uh, tell us, how does this policy change affect uh, Daimler's investment decisions in the unit that you operate? Well, we do not foresee any immediate impact on our investment decisions, uh, simply because we have enough capacity uh, to serve the demand which will come. And we will see how far this policy goes and generates actual demand and we look at investments when needed. Uh, let's talk about electric vehicles as well, because we are hearing reports that you could be launching an electric truck. Tell us where you're at potentially with this. Well, uh, you know, as Daimler India Commercial Vehicles, we are a part of global Daimler network. And we have access to this technology in whichever part of the world uh, Daimler is currently developing it. Uh, in fact, we have, uh, Daimler has already launched electric CV, CVs in a lot of other markets. Uh, one example is Fuso e Kenta, uh, which is being sold in Europe, Japan, and US. So I'm confident that we will develop these products in line with the market demand, which we will see in India, and actually release them when it's the right time for that. We were speaking to Nissan an hour ago, talking about huge demand for EVs uh, in ASEAN and in Southeast Asia. Are you seeing enough being done by the government to kind of help push this move towards EVs in India? Well, actually, the government is doing a lot uh, to facilitate this transition. And let me mention some of the steps which they have taken. 
if you if you visit a, a major indian city uh, lately you will see some vehicles with a green number plate and that is to make those vehicles more recognizable uh, so that they can some get some benefits uh, which come attached with evs now that's a small example but the bigger example is uh, the scheme which the government of india launched in 2015 it's called fame faster adoption of um, um, faster adoption and manufacturing of hybrid and electric vehicles and this scheme was designed to support the development of technology charging infrastructure as well as to create demand for evs now the phase 2 of this scheme is already running and uh, the government allocated a budget of 1.3 billion dollars to this scheme there's also another initiative which government is doing um, there's an organization called energy efficiency services limited and the job of that organization is to release tenders uh, for the buying of vehicles by the government and they have so far issued tenders for about 20000 evs in india and on top of that what's also happening which is very exciting is that individual states in india are coming with their own ev policy and that is basically in two directions one to encourage manufacturing of electric vehicles and second uh, that the customers can easily uh, adopt them by incentivization so i believe there is a lot of action which is happening but we have to be careful about when is the right time uh, to to scale it up because a uh, creation of the charging infrastructure is a prerequisite to make that happen are you excited about a potential rebound in in not only your company and and your uh, sector but also what we're seeing across the whole of india and do you think the government did do enough to help uh, rebound the economy from the depths of the pandemic well i'm frankly quite excited and i will tell you why first of all uh, 2020 was a very challenging year for everyone uh, and particularly for the medium and heavy commercial vehicle sector in india we had a degrowth of uh, 60% Uh, on 2019 volumes now in spite of that difficult market we actually doubled our share of market uh, in 2020 so i'm really excited because with the launch of bs6 which is the equivalent of euro6 uh, we have got overwhelming response from the customers in the market they trust because uh, they they take us as a technology player uh, and we have got uh, the most experience with the bs6 technology now uh, talking a little bit about budget okay, very i strongly quickly. believe I strongly believe that uh, the worst very, is very behind us. Do you... mm-hmm. The worst is behind us. Do you think the RBI needs to or will cut rates today? I don't think so. Uh, I think the RBI needs to carefully balance uh, the inflation versus the rate cuts. Uh, and with the budget, the government of India has taken huge steps uh, to increase the spending, which will definitely uh, lead to a rebound in the Indian market.